So this kind of self-building loop is interesting to understand because when you look at Mojo, what it stands for, some of the features, it seems sort of clear that this is a good direction for programming languages to evolve in the machine learning community. But it's still not obvious that it will because of this, whatever the engine of popularity, of virality. Um, is there something you could speak to like how how do you get people to switch? Yeah, well, I mean, I think that the 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 viral growth loop is to switch people to Unicode. Yes. I think, I think the Unicode file extensions are what I'm betting on. I think that's going to be the thing. Yeah. <laughs> T tell the kids that you could use the fire emoji and they'd be exactly. like, what? Exactly. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, well, in, in all seriousness, like, I mean, I think there's really, I'll give you two opposite answers. Mm -hmm. One is, I, I hope if it's useful, if it solves problems and if people care about those problems being solved, they'll adopt the tech. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the, that's, kind of the simple answer. And when you're looking to get tech adopted, the question is, is it solving an important problem people need solved? And is the adoption cost low enough that they're willing to make the switch and cut over and do do the pain up front so that they can actually do it, right? And so hopefully Mojo will be that for a bunch of people. And you know, people building these hybrid packages are suffering. It's really painful. And so I think that we have a good shot of helping people. But the other side is like, it's okay if people don't use Mojo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's not my job to say, like, everybody should do this. Like, I'm not saying Python is bad. Like, I hope Python, CPython, like, all these implementations, because the Python ecosystem is not just CPython. It's also a bunch of different implementations with different trade-offs. And this ecosystem is really powerful and exciting, um, as are other programming languages. It's not like TypeScript or something is going to go away, right? And so it's not a, there's not a winner-take-all thing. And so I hope that Mojo is exciting and useful to people. But if it's not, that's also fine. But I also wonder what the the use case for why you should try Mojo would be. So practically speaking, yeah. it seems like, uh, so there's entertainment, there's the dopamine hit of saying, holy shit, this is 10 times faster. Uh, this little piece of code is 10 times faster in Mojo. Out um, of the box before you get uh, to 35,000. <laughs> exactly. I mean, just even that, I mean, that's the dopamine hit that, uh, every programmer sort of dreams of is uh, the, the optimization. It's it's also the drug that can uh, pull you in and yeah. have you waste way too much of your life out optimizing and over-optimizing, right? Uh, but so what, uh, what do you see that would be like common? It's very hard to predict, of course, but um, you know, if you look 10 years from now, Mojo's uh, super successful. Yeah. What do you think would be the thing where people like try it and then, use it regularly and it kind of grows yeah. and grows and grows well, and grows. Well, so you talk about dopamine hit. And so what, again, humans are not one thing. And some people love rewriting their code and learning new things and throwing themselves in the deep end and trying out a new thing. In my experience, most people don't. Like they're too busy. They have other things going on. Um, by number, most people don't want, like this. I want to rewrite all my code. But <laughs> even those people, the too busy people, the people that uh, don't actually care about the language, that just care about getting stuff done, those people do like learning new things, right? Yeah. And so you talk about the dopamine rush of 10x faster. Wow, that's cool. I want to do that again. Well, it's also like, here's, here's the thing I've heard about in a different domain, and now I don't have to rewrite all my code. I can learn a new trick, mm -hmm. right? Well, that's called growth, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? And so, and so one thing that I think is cool about Mojo and... Again, those will take a little bit of time for, for example, the blog posts and the books and like all that kind of stuff to develop and the language needs to get further along. But what we're doing, you talk about types, like you can say, look, you can start with the world you already know and you can progressively learn new things and adopt them where it makes sense. And if you never do that, that's cool. You're not a bad person. <laughs> if you if you get really excited about it and want to go all the way in the deep end and want to rewrite everything and like whatever, that's cool, right? But I think the middle path is actually the more likely one, where it's um, you know you you come out with a new a new idea and you discover wow that makes my code way simpler, way more beautiful, way faster, way whatever. And I think that's what people like. Now, if you fast forward and you you said like ten years out, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I can give you a very different answer on that, which is, I mean, if you go back and look at what computers look like 20 years ago, every 18 months they got faster for free. 
<laughs> right? 2x faster every 18 months. It was like clockwork. It was it was free, right? You go back 10 years ago and we entered in this world where suddenly we had multi-core CPUs and we had GPUs. Mm -hmm. And if you squint and turn your head, what a GPU is, is it's just a many core, very simple CPU thing kind of, right? And so, um, and 10 years ago, it was CPUs and GPUs and graphics. Today, we have CPUs, GPUs, graphics, and AI, because it's so important, because the compute is so demanding, because of the smart cameras and the watches and all the different places the AI needs to, to work in our lives, it's caused this explosion of hardware. And so part of my thesis, part of my belief of where computing goes, if you look out 10 years from now, is it's not gonna get simpler. Physics isn't going back to where we came from. Mm -hmm. It's only gonna get weirder from here on out, right? And so to me, the exciting part about what we're building is it's about building that universal platform, which the world can continue to get weird. Because again, I don't think it's avoidable, it's physics. But we can help lift people, scale, do things with it. And they don't have to rewrite their code every time a new device comes out. And I think that's pretty cool. And so if Mojo can help with that problem, then I think that it will be hopefully quite interesting and quite useful to a wide range of people because um, there's so much potential and like there's so much, you know, maybe analog computers will become a thing or something, right? And we need to be able to get into a mode where we can move this programming model forward, but do so in a way where we're lifting people and, and growing them instead of forcing them to rewrite all their code and exploding them. Do you think there'll be a, a few major libraries that go Mojo first? Uh, well, so I mean, the modular engine is all Mojo. <laughs> so again, come back to like, we're not building Mojo because it's fun. We're building Mojo because we had to, to solve yes. these accelerators. That's the origin problems. story. But I mean, ones right. that are currently in Python. Yeah, so I think that a number of these projects will. And so one, one of the things, again, this is just my best guess, like each of the package maintainers also has, I'm sure plenty of other things going on. People don't like, really don't like rewriting code just for the sake of rewriting code. Um, but sometimes like, people are excited about like adopting a new idea. Yeah. And it turns out that while rewriting code is generally not people's first thing, it turns out that redesigning something while you rewrite it and using a rewrite as an excuse to redesign can lead to the 2.0 of your thing that's way better than the 1.0, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I have no idea, I can't predict that. But there's a lot of these places where, again, if you have a package that is half C and half Python, Right, it, it, it just solve the pain, make it easier to move things faster, make it easier to debug and evolve your tech. Uh, adopting Mojo kind of makes sense to start with, and then it gives you this opportunity to rethink these things. So the two big gains are that uh, there's a performance gain, and then um, there's the portability to all kinds of different devices. And there's safety, right? So you talk about real types. I mean, not saying this is for everybody, but that's actually a pretty big thing. Right? Yeah, and types are, and and so there's a bunch of different aspects of what you know what value Mojo provides, and so I mean it's funny for me like I've been working on these kinds of technologies and tools for too many years now, um, but you look at Swift, right? And we talked about Swift for TensorFlow, but Swift as a programming language, right? For uh, Swift's now 13 years old from when I started it. Yeah. So because I started in 2010, if I remember, and so. That that project, and I was involved with it for 12 years or something, right? That that project has gone through its own really interesting story arc, right? And it's a mature, successful, used by millions of people system, right? Uh, certainly not dead yet, right? But, but also, going through that story arc, I learned a tremendous amount about building languages, about building compilers, about working with community, and things like this. And so that experience, like I'm helping channel and bring directly into Mojo. And you know other systems, same thing. Like apparently, I like building, building and iterating and evolving things. And so you look at this LVM thing that I worked on twenty years ago. And you look at MLIR, right? And so a lot of the lessons learned in LVM got fed into MLIR. And I think that MLIR is a way better system than LVM was. And you know, Swift is a really good system, and it's 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 amazing. But I hope that Mojo will take the next step for step forward in terms of uh, design.